You're going to see a bunch of videos in this playlist this week um, here in the DevNet Zone that is all about the people that make up not just our community, but the people who make up DevNet itself. Um, I met with Matt, um, my peer, as we talked about the, t the full 10 years and where DevNet came from. And I really wanted to be, J bring Jason on. Um, Jason and I have known each other for years now. Jason's a distinguished engineer in DevNet, uh, been at Cisco far longer than, than just that. And I thought it'd be really interesting to kind of get your take on what it's been like to work at Cisco broadly as a DE and kind of explain a bit, what, that, what does that mean? Because I'm not sure everyone out there really understands what it means to have a place like that in this company. But how has that, how has all that been impacted by your time in DevNet? I know it's a huge set of questions. I think I asked you like four questions there, but what's it been like for you to be here, to be around the DevNet community, to be an, an engineer in the way that you are and all the special things you do like at Cisco Live? What, what's this been like for you? It's been great. I have always been a network management and operations focused person. That means I've always been on the application side, software development side. In early days of Cisco, for me, 1998, I've been here for 26 years, Cisco has largely been a router switch hardware company, right? And I came into this company knowing that I wasn't a hardware route switch person. I'm a network management operations guy. And that's an important skill to have because this equipment needs to be monitored, right? It needs to be provisioned. And so I felt very much like a, a redheaded stepchild or a unicorn, whatever phrase you want to use, a little bit out of place. Um, but it was good because as Cisco transformed, I was there every single time. When we started selling UCS servers, they're like, who knows servers? <laughs> We're router and switch people. Mm -hmm. I'm like, raise my hand. I know servers. I remember I worked for a company at the time just before or just as the servers got rolled out. And I remember being there and mentioning, we're going to buy Cisco servers. And my boss looked at me and he pulled me aside. And he was like, what are you talking about? What? What? And he was very confused. I even brought the idea that you could buy that sort of thing from a company like this. It was right. very funny. Yeah. So I raised my hand. I said, I know servers. I have a, a whole lab of HP and IBM servers that I use to run my network management tools on. We're selling servers now? Great, let me help with that. And then it was this virtualization stuff that's by this VMware company. <laughs> Anybody know that stuff? And I'm like, I do because my network management tools run on VMware and it's virtualized. And then it was, how about OpenStack? Oh, I know that too. And then a few years later, there was a transition, software defined networking. Who understands APIs and programming and controllers and all that kind of technology? And so I feel very blessed that every time Cisco kind of made a transition, it was into my wheelhouse. And that really helped in my career progression towards distinguished engineer and helping shape the company and the industry uh, around network manageability and operations. So. There's like two main things I, I, I took from that. I mean, there's a lot there, but a couple of questions I want to ask you. I'll start with one. Um, and because I think it's, this has been one of my favorite things to talk to you about over the years or learn from you about is, so for people who don't know Jason, um, Jason, uh, Jason does a ton with the Cisco knock specifically for running Cisco Live. So I want you to tell more about what that means to people, but not just, the, I, what I want you to talk about, if you don't mind, is not just the fact that you work with the NOC and you, you help design and build out what, what makes this sort of event happen. But more importantly, what is it like to do something like that knowing that what you're trying to really do is to make a really amazing people, uh, sorry, amazing experience for all the people here at the event? What's that like? Yeah, well, there's funny stories behind that too. For the first, I've been doing the Cisco Live NOC for 18 years now. And before that, we would farm that responsibility out to companies that would actually bring the technology to large-scale events because not every company can host their own technology. Obviously that makes sense for us because this is our equipment, let's go ahead and do it. And so Joe Clark, another distinguished engineer, and I got together years ago and said, this is our equipment, we have access to thousands of CCIEs on site and people who've developed the code. So. If we have a problem, we can pull from any number of engineers on site to fix anything. And thankfully, we haven't had many of those kind of problems. 
But we decided to do this and build our own network operations center for the venue and not rely on either the venue's staff or bringing in any uh, other outside help for it. And they're mostly volunteers. We have a very small community of probably 10 people whose job is to go to every event like Cisco Live, US and Europe, Partner Showcase, our own internal events like Impact. But then the rest of us are volunteers from groups like DevNet and sales and product marketing that just bring in our own volunteerism and specialty towards different technologies. And being part of DevNet is an interesting experience in the NOC because how important network programmability, how important observability is, and being able to have access to all this equipment, being able to build scalable solutions and pull out statistics, the, the geek factor is, uh, is very high with that team. That's awesome, dude. And you know, it, it, you, you just touched on my second question, which I love, the idea of so much programmability that occurs naturally in something like the Cisco NOC, but I, I don't know that as many people realize that as we'd like to. And that's one of the reasons why DevNet exists and we continue to teach community members or do the best we can to enable and encourage and provide a sense of belonging for anybody here, anybody virtually watching these videos who couldn't attend the event in person. Um, would you mind talking a little bit about how bringing the concept of APIs or programmable interfaces and the way those reshape can reshape network administration, network monitoring, that whole idea. Like, what's it been like to bring that to people who may or may not have even thought that they could do that? Because it opens so many doors that you just don't ever consider. But I know, I, I know there's still a lot of people who are like, I don't really understand why these, I haven't learned it because I don't really get why they connect. Like, how, what has it been like to bring that type of learning and education and enablement to so many different people over the years? Sure, it, well, it's very enabling. Uh, when we first started, the idea was every device by itself must be configured atomically, right? And in an event like this, things change so fast. You, if we were to use the old school mindset of configure this switch and send it to this booth, well, what happens if that booth changes for whatever reason? Different vendor, different process or product being shown, all of a sudden you got to take that equipment back and reconfigure it manually. Old school would be plug in a console cable and, and figure it out and then ship it back. Now with programmatic interfaces and the ability to manage things in mass from a central location through a controller or whatever, we can make changes to the entire venue very quickly without ever using a console cable and without having to wait for a, a period of time to do a maintenance window. There are no maintenance windows. We do changes all day long as necessary when they pop up. That's cool. It's, it is, you know, someone might be watching and think to themselves, you know, Cisco Live, you're Cisco, big company. You have all these resources available to you. Probably not as many as you might think we do, but you know, there's a lot of resources available. How do we, from your perspective, how do we take how can anyone watching, how can we do a little bit better in helping our community understand that you can take these concepts that run a huge venue and an event like this and distill that down into something that can be very consumable for them? Because I have to imagine that even being in the community before I joined DevNet, and I don't have nearly the network administration or architecture experience that you do, but even being in that role for the times that I was there, you know, you see this and you're like, yeah, this is really cool. I don't know how I'd ever do it, but this is really rad. How do you distill that? How can you help people distill that down and make it, make it feel like you can actually do this? This can be daunting, but you can do this. How do you, how do you help someone do that? Well, it's, it's an iterative process. It doesn't happen all overnight. And some of the dashboards and collection engines that you see have been years in development. And I even developed a dashboard yesterday that was something called a, a Sankey diagram that shows kind of a spaghetti chart of wireless clients connecting to WPA2, WPA3, Wi-Fi 6, and the breakdowns and splits of capabilities. And we can make better business decisions based on that. So it starts with being curious. What, what are the things that I want to achieve? And then looking for 
how to do that. And what we do here, and because I'm part of the DevNet organization, a lot of the work I'm doing goes on to public Git repos. So you can look Jason C. Davis on uh, GitHub, or you can look at Cisco's own open source repositories in, from our OSPO team. And then we have a lot of our uh, Cisco Live collectors and dashboards and Grafana definition files that are out there. And I'd say use them. I, I have people reaching out all the time. I'm using this for my environment. I'd like to modify it. And if they have the skills, modify it themselves. If they don't have the skills, then as a community, we can get together to say, hey, this is a good way to handle that with Meraki, or this is a good way to handle this with Catalyst equipment, right? It's, it's about sharing. I love that. It's the way you just described that, and the, the, the accessibility you've created, you and others, I should say, have yep. created in that type of work, the, these years of experience. What that, I think, at least in my view, what it helps with a community member who can be on any, any point in their learning journey in trying to understand how to leverage these additional tools. Um, and by tools, I don't just mean the Grafanas of the world, but I mean the concepts of a programmable interface that can help you. You know, how to add those additional tools to your tool belt as a network engineer, a software developer, whatever it is. Be curious, ask questions. What is the problem you're trying to solve for? These are just additional tools that can help you. They may not always be helpful for you, but they can be so long as you understand that they exist and what they can do for you. And I think that's that's a really well said way of helping somebody understand that that's what we that's why we're here. The reason DevNet exists is to help people in the community. That's what we're here for. You go to developer.cisco.com slash code exchange. You mentioned a couple other repos. Our code exchange is something very similar where you can have your code wherever you want. If you want to share a tool or a code sample or an app, some fully developed thing you built, there it, it, I'm not just plugging that because it's ours. I'm plugging it because it's one of many, as you mentioned, that are available that Cisco just puts out there for anyone to go grab. You, you don't, doesn't require swiping a credit card to get. Like we just, you, you and others do a lot of really good work. Why don't we share that with people? Exactly. I mean, it's, I was in advanced services for almost 20 years, or it's now called CX within Cisco. And for that, I was doing work on behalf of a paying customer, right? But another wonderful benefit of joining our DevNet team is I'm no longer constrained by doing development work that's only for the benefit of one customer that's paying Cisco for XYZ. Now I'm developing solutions for a broader community that can consume it without cost and decide for themselves if they want to extend the functionality or share it with the rest of the community themselves. That's awesome. Jason, thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. Thank you for all the contributions you give, not just the technical contributions, but teaching people, being willing to help them. I've, at several Cisco Lives, I've seen you over in the Cisco Knock area teaching people, here's how we actually did this for Cisco so that they can go do it themselves, that this doesn't have to be a mystery. Um, I, I have to, speaking for everybody else, hopefully that people agree with me, it's hugely beneficial that you do what you do, so thank you. Thank you.